Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with the Spain News Update. And the first lot of weapons that Spain is sending to Ukraine is ready and will be sent in coming days. But more about that in just a moment. Firstly, a big thanks to all of the people that left comments on the last video. Lots of comments, lots of debate happening there as usual. Thanks to people that supported the channel through a donation or by buying me a beer or a coffee. Many thanks for that. Thanks to people that bought merchandise and a big thanks to my patrons on Patreon for your ongoing support. Now, let's get into the news. And as I said, the shipment of weapons that Spain is sending directly to Ukraine is ready and they should be sent in coming days. As we can see here, Spain sends four A400M aircraft with weapons for the Ukrainian resistance. Spain is chartering four A400M cargo planes to deliver weapons to the Ukrainian resistance. The first two planes will leave mid-morning this Friday from the Los Llanos Air Base, Albacete, the other two on Saturday. Spain is sending two days after President Pedro Sánchez announced it in Congress its arms aid and is doing so in two phases for for logistical reasons. The first destination of the flights has not been revealed for security reasons. According to the Defense Ministry, the material will be left at an airport in Poland near Ukraine and will be picked up by Ukrainian soldiers who will bring it into their country. The material that Spain is sending to the Ukrainian resistance are weapons that are easy to handle, that do not require training. Some of the fighters are civilians called up by the Ukrainian government and that our country had stored as strategic reserves. So there we go. The weapons now on their way to Ukraine. As we saw the other day, the Prime Minister Pedro Sánchez backflipped on his initial decision not to send weapons directly. He wanted to send them through the European Union, but I imagine international pressure got the better of him, and he came out the other day and said that he will indeed send weapons directly to Ukraine. And let's just say that coalition partner Podemos is extremely angry at that decision. In fact, it has even caused the split in the Podemos party. Now, one of the big questions arising from the Russian invasion of Ukraine is what's going to happen to Russian gas supplies in Europe. Well, apparently Spain can solve part of the problem. Because as we can see here, Spain can solve 40% of the EU's Russian gas needs in the future, according to an internal foreign ministry report. Spain can provide the European Union with 40% of the gas it is forced to buy from Russia according to a confidential foreign ministry report to which El Mundo has had access. The 14-page document was drawn up by the Directorate General for International Economic Relations on what it calls the Spanish option of gaining weight in the EU after the tension unleashed with Russia over the annexation of Crimea. Its technical data remain valid without significant alterations, according to experts consulted. So Spain has hatched a plan to gain importance in the European Union by providing 40% of the gas needed by other EU countries. So let's see if indeed Spain does take advantage of this opportunity. Now Spain's African border is under pressure again as thousands of migrants over the last few days have tried to jump over the fences in the autonomous city of Melilla in the north of Africa. And as we can see here, hundreds of Africans cross into Spain's Melilla for the second day. Hundreds of people tried for a second day to climb over the fences that separate a Spanish city in North Africa from Morocco, authorities said Thursday. The Spanish government's delegation in Melilla said 1,200 migrants attempted to scale the 6 metre or 20 foot barrier that perimeters the city and that 380 succeeded. On Wednesday, an unprecedented 2,500 people tried to enter the city, resulting in 491 crossings, according to local authorities. Spanish security forces activated an anti-intrusion mechanism early Thursday to confront what the government's delegation described as extreme violence by trespassers who threw stones, used hooks and sticks at border agents. So thousands of African migrants trying to climb over those fences down there in the autonomous city of Melilla in the north of Africa. And let's be honest, it doesn't matter how high the fences are, when you've got that many people trying to get over them, it's difficult to stop. Now, as mentioned yesterday, former King Juan Carlos is making headlines again, as all investigations against him in Spain for irregular economic activity have been dropped. And as a result, he may even return to Spain. Spain's self-exiled former King Juan Carlos is thought to be considering a return home after prosecutors shelved three separate investigations into his financial affairs, citing insufficient evidence, the statute of limitation, and the monarch's constitutional immunity. The 84-year-old left Spain for Abu Dhabi in August 2020 after a series of damaging allegations were made about his business dealings that further dented his already battered reputation and embarrassed his son, 
King Felipe. In March 2020, Felipe stripped Juan Carlos of his annual stipend and renounced his own personal inheritance from his father after reports that he was in line to receive millions of euros from a secret offshore fund with ties to Saudi Arabia. So just like that, all of the irregularities surrounding former King Juan Carlos have gone up in a puff of smoke. Two years in luxury self-exile in Abu Dhabi and now planning to come back to Spain. And who was the Spanish politician that said that every Spaniard is equal in the eyes of the law no matter who they are? I don't know, I can't remember, but obviously they were wrong because not everybody is equal when it comes to the law and that has just been proven. Now the government here in Spain has decided to put the pandemic on the back burner and it will no longer release daily COVID numbers. And as we can see here, the health ministry will switch from daily to twice weekly COVID-19 data instead of daily. The peak of the sixth wave is now behind us. The evolution of the pandemic, whose incidence rate is now below 500 points, has led the Ministry of Health, with prior agreement of the autonomous communities, to change the frequency of publication of both the vaccination report and that of the health alerts and emergencies coordination centre. The former will now be issued once a week, while the latter, which includes data on incidents, infections and deaths, will be published twice a week. Now let's have a look at the most updated summary of the health situation here in Spain, and we can see that accumulated incidence rate now sitting at 472. Hospital pressure is now low at 4.8%, and ICU pressure is also low at 9.7%. However, there were still 202 COVID-related deaths reported yesterday. Now, a New Zealand actor has got himself into trouble here in Spain in the province of Alicante after a late night bar brawl. And Kiwi actor Anthony Starr has been sentenced to one year in prison in Alicante for assaulting a young man in Castaños. The actor Anthony Starr, who plays Homelander in the series The Boys, has been sentenced in Alicante to one year in prison as the author of a crime of injury for the assault of a 21 year old man in a pub in Castaños Street. The magistrate of the Ninth Court of Instruction of Alicante, Maria Luisa Carrascosa, on duty, has issued the conviction following a plea agreement between the parties and in addition to the year in prison where the mitigating circumstances of drunkenness is applied. The popular actor is ordered to pay compensation of €5,000 to the victim. So a one-year prison sentence and a €5,000 fine for New Zealand actor Anthony Starr after he was convicted of assault in Alicante. The jail sentence has apparently been suspended, but what shocked me here is just how quick he went through the justice system here in Spain. In fact, I think all of this took place over a couple of days the assault, the arrest, the conviction, and as I said before, I just can't believe how quick it was. Now let's have a look at some of the comments from previous videos. One here from Tridesac looks beautiful. This may be a silly question, but what is the flora of Madrid? It tends to look almost arid in places, but what are the types of trees and plants that dominate the countryside? Yeah, Tridesac, thanks for the comment, and to be honest, the flora in this part of Spain lacks a little bit of diversity, given the weather conditions that we have here, very hot summers, and quite cold winters. And my experience as a gardener here has been that it's very difficult to grow certain types of plants. And if we talk about trees in this particular area, cherry blossoms are very popular, almond trees are very popular, and pine trees are also popular. Olive trees are also quite popular, and there are a lot of acacias. When it comes to shrubs, oleanders are abundant, and in my garden, the dominant species is a bay tree. So basically, in this part of Spain, you need flora that can withstand very hot summer temperatures, around the 40 degree mark, and also cold winter temperatures, sometimes down to five or 10 below zero. And during the snowstorm that we had last year, it was about 15 below zero for a week. And another factor of the weather here is that it's also extremely dry, so not easy for plants to grow. One here from Jonathan, people ask me why I don't own a car here in Montevideo. I live in the middle of the city, so I don't really need one. And besides, cost of ownership are high. Additionally, you have the little inconveniences of owning a car like you're experiencing now. Yeah, Jonathan, thanks for the comment, and you're absolutely right. I'm currently experiencing some of the inconveniences of owning a car. My tires were slashed the other day and it cost me a lot of money to change them. And yesterday I had to go to an official car dealership because of a defect with the car model. So definitely inconvenient sometimes to own a car. And if you don't need one, which is your case because you live in the center of the city, you're probably better off. One here from Enrique. Stu, I thought you lived in a residential area where there shouldn't be any crime. Do you think it might have been one of the neighbors with a certain animosity toward you? Or is it that this type of vandalism has always been latent in Spain? Regards. Yeah, Enrique, thanks for the comment. And to be completely honest, I have absolutely no idea who slashed my tire. 
It could have been an angry neighbour, but I don't think so, because as far as I know, I haven't pissed anybody off around here in recent times. I think it was most probably a drunken youth with a knife, somebody who was angry at the world, saw my car and decided to commit an act of vandalism, which at the weekends here is quite common. Bus stops often get smashed, street signs often get pushed over, and graffiti often gets painted on walls. So that's my theory, but I will probably never know what really happened. On here from Andrew, like these driving videos, Stuart, Obviously, it's interesting getting your update, but seeing some of the wonderful Spanish countryside is a real pleasure too. Keep up the good work. Yeah, Andrew, thanks for the comment and glad you like the driving videos when I get out and about every now and again. I also like doing the videos and I think it's good to show people the surroundings. And hopefully, now that the pandemic has started to ease up, I'll be able to get out and about even more. One here from Christine. Hi, Stu. As you featured a picture of where I live in La Linea today, I thought I would join in. I echo your observation regarding the ending of the pandemic. On entering my local Lidl yesterday, I almost fell over a massive promotion of all things COVID-related, LOL face masks, hand sanitizers, etc. It's obvious to me that they know that pretty soon they won't be able to give them away, let alone sell them. I can't wait to be able to stop wearing the mask. Let those who wish to continue, let the rest of us breathe freely. Yeah, Christine, thanks for the comment and interesting to see that the supermarket chain Lidl is having a fire sale on all things COVID related. And we'll no doubt see more supermarkets doing this as the health situation improves. And from what I've read and heard recently, it's only a matter of time before mask wearing becomes personal choice rather than obligation in indoor public spaces. So hopefully we can all start putting this pandemic behind us here in Spain. And finally, one here from Glenda. Hi, Stu. I'm an English resident in Spain and I love your videos. Thank you for taking the time to put them out. Just thought I'd let you know my daughter lives in WA and I was able to visit her as the borders open just after midnight on Thursday. Very excited. Hope you get to visit your family ASAP. All the best. Yeah, Glenda, thanks for the comment. And you're right. After 630 days, I think it is, the borders of Western Australia, my home state, have finally reopened. And people like myself and you, Glenda, are now able to visit our family members again. Premier Mark McGowan has realized that he can't keep COVID-19 out any longer. And with high COVID-19 vaccination rates down there, they have decided to live with the virus, which is something that we've been trying to do here in Spain for the last two years. On that note, I'll wrap the video up. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. Debate the video out as you normally do. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. I'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego.